Hello, this is Mr. Bean from flippedmath.com. Welcome to a walkthrough on the 2022 AP Calculus free response question. And this is for AB problem number six. This problem is dealing with two different particles. We have particle P and it's traveling along the X axis. And then particle Q is going along the Y axis. But for particle P, they give us position. While as for particle Q, they give us velocity. So we just need to make sure we track that as we're working through these problems. They also give us a, uh, on a kind of like an initial condition here where at time one, it's at position two for particle Q. So the first problem A, I, uh, I put this little 4.2 here. So this number here just represents what lesson this is from. 4.2 is straight line motion, connecting position, velocity, and acceleration. That's the lesson. So we to find the velocity of particle P, we take particle P's derivative because they gave us position. So how do we get position? It's derivative. That's what this is. The V of T is equal to X prime of T. So all I did here was I just took the derivative of this thing. Okay, so that's how we got this answer. That one's pretty straightforward, quick little problem there. For part B, we are asked to first find the acceleration of particle Q. Well, particle Q, we are given the velocity. So how do we find acceleration? We take the derivative of velocity. In this case, I'm going to rewrite this as t to the negative 2. So that way I can see when I take the derivative of that, it's going to be negative 2 over, and then it'll be to the third power, negative third power. So that makes it drop down there. So there is my velocity equation, or excuse me, acceleration equation. Okay, so that's the first part. Now the next part they ask us about when is the speed decreasing? for particle Q. And if you remember, we have to think about velocity and acceleration, and the signs must be different in order for the speed to be decreasing. So one way of doing that is to come up with a quick little chart. Now notice how did I make this chart? I'm looking at only the, the uh, values, the interval from zero to infinity. And the way I figured that out is I noticed that the uh, velocity function here, it's got a critical point at t equals zero. And the acceleration function also has a critical point at t equals zero, and that's the only critical points. And so you notice here it says that for when t is greater than zero. So I don't need to worry about any, any particular interval. I'm just going from zero forever. There's nowhere else that I need to check for uh, any critical points. So if we plug in a positive number as a t value into velocity, this is positive. And the acceleration, if you plug in a positive number into t, like just the number one, then you get a negative answer. So now what happens? Velocity and acceleration have different signs. One's positive and one's negative. So the answer statement I could put is the speed of particle Q is decreasing for all values of t greater than zero because V of t and A of t have different signs. We need to say something about velocity and acceleration that those things have different signs. All right, and this one was from lesson 5.9 which was connecting a function, its first derivative and its second derivative. And you can see right here that uh, we're visiting things about uh, motion with the particle speeding up or down. Okay, so you can get that answer down if you need it. And let's go on to part C. For part C, this is lesson 8.2. What's 8.2? 8.2 is position, velocity, and acceleration using integrals. All right, so we're asked to find the position function for particle Q particle Q gives us the velocity function. So if we have velocity function, how do we find position? We've got to work backwards, which means taking the integral. So that's what this setup is, that y of, y of t is going to equal v, the integral of v of t. Or in other words, taking the integral of t to the negative 2. So I just rewrote this so it's a little easier. All right, so what's that integral? That is going to be t to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 plus c. So this is my y of t function, but I don't know what c is and I need to figure that out. That's where this part comes in handy. They gave us one condition and that is if t is a one, then the y has to equal two. So that means this is two, the time is a one. So that whole thing is just going to be negative one plus c, solve for c, and c is a three. So now I can write out my answer and there we go. y of t is going to equal negative one over t plus three. So that's my position function for particle Q. And our last problem now, part D. So part D is from 115. 115 deals with limits at infinity and horizontal asymptotes. So it's like we're dealing with a horizontal asymptote. We're just gonna have our time 
approach infinity. That's what they're saying. As time approaches infinity, which particle is going to be farther from the origin? So P is moving on the x-axis, Q is moving on the y-axis. So what we are really doing is taking the limit as T approaches infinity of both position functions to see what the position is. So think of x of P here. Here's the position function for that one. Well, this is the same thing as six minus four over E to the T. So this fraction here, that is approaching the number zero as t approaches infinity. So the whole function, the position, is approaching the value of 6. Now let's look at the position of y. So where was that one? We just did that one in uh, part c. And so this fraction right there, that thing is approaching 0 uh, as t approaches infinity. So 0 plus 3 gives us 3. So which one is going to be further away? The particle p is. So I'm just going to say the particle P will be farther away from the origin as T approaches infinity. And there's my work that showed that. Okay, hopefully this helped you get through this problem. This is Mr. Beans signing off.